Imagine that I give you $5 million. You have to invest that money into one of the three companies that come to pitch their business. The first company is an IT company that works on a machine learning algorithm. The second company is a biotech firm that seeks to cure cancer. The last company is a mobile application company that has a product that could be known as the next Instagram. Which company do you choose and how do you make that decision? My name is Michael Wang and in this video I'll be teaching you guys how to answer the question of which company to invest in. Today I'll be talking about the concepts of PER, PBR, ROE, and EPS. I know you're probably thinking of not watching this video but I promise you while these concepts might not be the most entertaining, they will certainly help you gain a sense of what to look at when investing in stocks and ultimately not only help you make more money, but also help you make better decisions. So without further ado, let's get started. Legendary stock investor Peter Lynch once said that there's a reason why the majority of people make money in real estate, but not in the stock market. People spend months on finding the right property, whereas in choosing the right stock to invest in, they only spend a few minutes. If you're an investor who just started investing in the stock market, you probably agree with this. You never knew how to figure out which companies to invest in, and so you just go with whatever the expert says is good on CNBC. But buying stocks is not too different from buying properties. Both require critical thinking, knowledge in the field, and patience. Let's take a further look at a comparison between the two processes and keep in mind that you currently received $5 million from me and you're looking to invest in one of the three companies. In real estate, you first visit an agency to see which properties are for sale. Similarly, with stocks, you visit a venture capital to see which companies are willing and ready for investments. Then you visit the actual property you're interested in purchasing. You check to see if there are any leakages, whether the electricity is fine, and so on and so forth. With stocks, you also visit the company to understand the overall atmosphere of the company and how things are run. You then meet up with the property owner. You ask him questions about the property and why it's good and what you might want to look out for. Similarly with stocks, you talk to the C-level executives of the company. They introduce the firm to you and pitch their business, just like a homeowner would pitch his property. Then you take a look around the neighborhood. You take a look at how far the local school is located from the property, how long it takes for you to get to Walmart from your place, and so on and so forth. With stocks, you also do the same by analyzing the industry. Then you ask yourself whether the property can appreciate in price over time. You look at the price history of the property and analyze how much it has gone up by. Similarly, with stocks, you think about the capabilities of the C-level executives and the potential of the company in order to think of the potential returns you can get by investing. The next step is to take a look at the land registration documents and take a look at the mortgage on the property. In the same vein, you take a look at the company's financial statements. Then comes the important part, negotiation. You negotiate with the homeowner to see if you can get it for a slightly cheaper price. In the same context, when investing in stocks, a valuation of the company is conducted, just as how you would want to purchase the property for the cheapest price possible. You want to make sure that you acquire the company stock at a cheap price so that you can maximize your profits. Lastly, you sign the contract and make the payment so that the property is now officially yours. When investing in stocks as well, with all the previous steps being settled according to plan, the investment decision is executed. But this is easier said than done. Let's say that you want to invest in Tesla. How many of the steps can you actually take? Can you really meet Elon Musk? Can you really take a look around Tesla's office and gigafactories? Of course not. So what you need to do is look at this list and think of what you can do to the best of your abilities as a retail investor in order to make the best investment decisions. For instance, you don't really need to meet Elon Musk in person to find out what he's thinking. What type of person he is, the vision he has for his company, all of that information is available online. The stocks you'll be investing in are publicly listed companies. There's no need for you to visit the company to check whether the firm is actually legit because that was already done by the SEC when the companies went public. 
you also want to take a deeper look at what the company is doing and what it seeks to achieve by checking their investment presentations on their website. And you can always do research on the industry they operate within by searching the right information online. You can also view the company's financial statements on websites like Yahoo Finance. A publicly listed company is valued by the market. You get the number of shares and you multiply by the price per share, which gives you the market capitalization of the company. The market cap is essentially how much the market values the company at. So for instance, Tesla has 947.9 million shares outstanding. You multiply this by the price of the share, which is $880 right now, and you get $834 billion in market cap. In order to determine whether this is a good buy, you need to know how to analyze a company and its financials, and you need your own investment standards and philosophy. And in order to set your own investment standards, you need to understand four key concepts, the ROE, the PER, the PBR, and the EPS. I'm going to explain these concepts and their formula, and you won't understand at first, but just bear with me because I'll make it easier for you to understand with a specific example in the later part of this video. But before we get into today's main topic, please make sure to drop a like and don't forget to smash the subscribe button as well. So let's get started with the return on equity or ROE. This measures the profitability of a company in relation to stockholder equity. The ROE is calculated by dividing the net income by the shareholder's equity. Even if you don't understand this yet, just bear with me on this. Next, we have the price earnings ratio or the PER. This is a good tool to determine whether a company is overvalued. The PER is calculated by dividing the current share price by earnings per share. So for instance, if a company's share price is at $100 and their earnings per share is $10, this gives them a PER of 10. I know what you're thinking. What the hell, Mike? What am I supposed to do with all this information? But just be patient and we'll come back to this concept again. Then we also take a look at the price to book value ratio or the PBR. This measures the market's valuation of a company relative to its book value and it's calculated by dividing the market price per share by the book value per share. Lastly, the EPS or earnings per share. This is simply the company's profit divided by the outstanding number of shares and it works as a good indicator of how profitable the company is. So let's take a look at an example to help your understanding. Let's say you currently have $100,000 and you decide to open a restaurant. You're required to pay $100,000 in deposits and $3,000 in monthly rent. You also need to pay to renovate the interior and purchase utensils, which amounts to $50,000. So you go to the bank and you get a loan. So in total, you start off your business with $150,000. A year later, you check how well your business is done. You find out that the restaurant did $300,000 in revenue, and after subtracting all costs, you're left with $30,000. With this, you can calculate the return on equity by dividing $30,000 by $100,000, which gives you an ROE of 30%. Excluding the money you borrowed from the bank, you look at how much return your own money was able to generate in profits. From the perspective of an investor, the higher the ROE, the better. Now let's assume that you ran the business for three years and you now want to sell your business to someone else so you can move on to do other things. How much do you want to sell the restaurant for? After three years, you now have loyal customers and it consistently generates $30,000 in profits every year. So you decide to sell the restaurant for $200,000 in total with a $100,000 premium on top of the deposit. If someone buys the restaurant for that price, it means that the business is worth $200,000. With this, we can calculate the PER and the PBR. If a restaurant that generates $30,000 in net profits gets sold for $200,000, the PER is 6.7. And then we also have the PBR. You started the business with $100,000 of your own money and sold it for $200,000, which gives you a PBR of 2. For the PER and the PBR, the lower the better. 
A low PER means that you're buying a company that generates a lot of net profit for a very cheap price. Same for the PBR. The lower it is, the more undervalued it is. Let's make this example more realistic. Let's say you started this restaurant in the form of a limited liability company. You started the company with $100,000. Given that you issue shares that are worth $10, you issue 10,000 shares in total. Now, if this restaurant is sold for $200,000, that means the $10 shares you hold are sold for $20. When we invest in stocks, this is how you make money. We then move on to the concept of EPS, or earnings per share. In this case, the restaurant generates $30,000 in profits. So if we divide that by the number of shares, which is $10,000, we get an EPS of $3. But let's say that the region in which your restaurant is located is to be set as a special tourist zone. And as a result, there's high expectations for the business to prosper. So taking this into consideration, you decide to sell the restaurant for $300,000 instead of the initial $200,000. And if someone recognizes the value of the restaurant and is willing to purchase it for $300,000, that increases the PBR from two to three and the PER increases from 6.7 to 10. Notice that the net profit the business generates doesn't change, but with expectations that an increasing number of tourists will visit the restaurant, the PER and PBR increases. When you look at a company's financial statement, remember that a high PER indicates that while the company doesn't make much money, there are expectations that the company has massive growth potential for the future. So going back to the example of Tesla, we can see that Tesla has a PER of 1,682, which indicates that there is a lot of expectation and hype behind this company's performance for the coming years. So that is it for today, guys. I've explained the concepts of PER, PBR, ROE, and EPS. If you like this video or found it to be helpful, please don't forget to smash the like button. And I don't do YouTube full time, so apologies for the inconsistent updates. But if you want to see more educational videos like these, don't forget to subscribe. In my next video, I'll be talking about how to read financial statements. I'll see you guys in the next video.